Super. 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 We are here. The Justice League has formed. It is I, your leader, Baby Boy Brank. And I'm joined by... Jay, I'm sorry. I was trying to think of something clever to say, and I I, I lost it. I lost it. This is Jay okay. Jolly. Loser CEO Superman. Of, uh, <laughs> Broler Incorporated. Um, I just... Are we talking about the... Uh, the bro the, cut? The Snyder the, uh, cut, of course, the, the bro cut. The one that we've the, all been waiting for where Batman's bro, car gets lifted. Brostus League, yeah. Brostus League, the broster cut. The broster cut. Yeah. The Zach Broder cut. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, that, the whole thing is just now lifted trucks and American flags. It's, it's lifted trucks. Batman gets a lifted car. Uh, Aquaman starts singing those sweet, sweet Florida Georgia Line songs. Dude, it's all about them Georgia um, Lines. <laughs> Gal Gadot gets some sweet, like, Eddie Bauer costumes on. It's, it's, it's a good time. It's a good time for all. Dude, I would literally love it if somebody recut that movie and it was just them in lifted trucks with flags on both sides driving down the street. There's like a, a convoy of their cars that look like stupid trucks. <laughs> um, yeah, man, I am. Uh, I'm actually kind of excited to watch that. I'm excited to see I, what he's gonna do to it. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if you've read any. I, I I let myself read the reviews for this one. Okay, just because I've seen the move like the regular edition of the movie yeah i watched it as and well. uh it's it's getting pretty solid reviews i think ign like they're super snobs and they gave it an eight so i mean it can't be all that bad oh really it uh they've all reviewed it mm -hmm. did they review it today because i saw a bunch of justice league stuff and i was just getting so over it i didn't click on any of them so i didn't yeah, know anybody no, they, their review it. popped up today um you know all the other like critics that i've seen who've been posting early stuff have said that it's like a it's a masterpiece of cinema, of, of cinema. So, I mean, can't be that bad. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm hoping it's good. I loved Zack Snyder back in the day, obviously 300. And I'm a huge Watchmen graphic novel fan. So mm -hmm. I was really excited when he did that. And I thought his adaptation was pretty good, even though there were some big changes. But I really fell off of liking him around, I don't know if you remember the movie Sucker Punch. Um, but Sucker Punch is a movie I did not enjoy for the most part. Pretty much at all. Like I, I think it's okay, but the acting was so bad, and the story felt like it was like cobbled together. That it was one of those movies that I just, yeah, I, I don't think I'll ever rewatch it, Sucker Punch. It, it was a, uh, it was a very meta film. Like they were trying to accomplish something that made it so like the simple, um, simple like film viewers couldn't really like latch on to it. Okay, yeah, and I. Because of that, like, it, I'm, like, looking through his IMDb to see what else I've seen of his. Um, because of that, like, I, you know, kind of Watchmen. really fell off. Because I also didn't like Man of Steel, which I, I oh, hate I, Superman movies. Really? So, I, I thought yeah. Man of Steel was kind of, it was nice in the fact that it didn't feature Lex Luthor. Yeah, I mean, but I'm looking through, like, his, his directorial, like, cuts and stuff. And it's like... He starts off so strong, like Dawn of the Dead, 300, Watchmen, and then it immediately goes to Legend of the Guardians of the Owls of Gahul. Yeah, Sucker he did Punch. a lot of. He did a lot of. He's done a lot of very experimental things, and for that, like I commend him because he he takes chances. I mean, there's not a lot of people in Hollywood that do that anymore. Yeah, I I just I will say I I thought uh, Batman vs Superman. I watched like the director's cut or whatever. I thought it was fine. I know everybody hates it. Mm -hmm. I actually enjoyed watching it. The um, director's cut is a lot better than the regular version. Okay, so I didn't ever see the regular version, so I don't have like anything to judge it by. But yeah, I I actually didn't mind the Justice League when it came out. I know a lot of people hated it. I thought it was pretty enjoyable. I am excited to see his version more because. I felt like the Justice League that came out was trying to be the Avengers, and I know. Oh, for sure, and that's why it failed. I mean, that's it felt very. They they had established a tone in a world, and the, that movie totally just broke away from that tone in that world. So that's I think that's what upset a lot of people. I I didn't think it was awful. I just I didn't enjoy it though. 
Yeah, I think um, what's his name, Joss Whedon, the guy that everybody's attacking right now, or the <laughs> that whatever? poor guy. He's like has created some of like the most cult, um, you know, sci-fi series ever, and everyone silence like, him. Okay, he did yeah. something to someone. <laughs> I forgot what he. I I forgot like the accusations against him. I feel like most of them are are fairly harmless i think there was one well, racism accusation yeah but beyond they're, that, like they're calling it like abusive abuse. work work uh behavior or something like that but they haven't stated what it is so i mean i feel like i want to have an opinion but i can't because i don't really know what i'm having an opinion on yeah i think it's one of those uh those things where he could just be an asshole. You know what I mean? Like somebody you right. don't want to work with and really rude and horrible. And because of the world we live in, <laughs> people could be calling it abuse, you know, like an abusive yeah. work situation. Like mm -hmm. I've worked with people that are rude to their essentially contractors in the past too. It's not cool that those people are rude to the people, but there's rude people all around. Like, I don't know yeah. how they're going to solve this like scenario, you're, you know? You're, yeah, you're very abusive on this podcast. I mean, so just, I just to you, I'm, though, but that's, there's I'm a clause. I'm about to start my own petition here. Yeah, there's because... a clause in the law that says if it's to Jay Jolly, it's actually not considered abuse. It's actually encouraged. <laughs> uh, they're actually going to give me a medal for doing that. Oh, the the oh, city, the mayor's oh, coming over to my, yeah, my place metal, today. Bronze, bronze medal. Okay. Uh, gold medal. Thank Go you. Oh, and keys oh. to the city uh you and have be, keys belittle it opens and all the doors you have belittled jay jolly so much this last month that we would like to give you a bonus check as well <laughs> as keys to the city i mean if i can get you to cry that's what they really want <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, man. Uh, this is Super BS, a podcast about video games mostly. Um, and Justice League. <laughs> and Justice League. No, it's, it, I think it's because movie, movies are so few and far between, even though uh, here in California, theaters, I think, reopen this week, that like when there is something coming out, for the most part, I'm excited. I think I've seen most of the big ones. I didn't end up getting to uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. Did you watch that one? No, yeah. I have not seen like the first, I think the first like legitimate 2021 movie that I'll have seen is going to be uh, either the Snyder Cut or the uh, Godzilla movie that comes out this Friday. You guys didn't watch Raya and the Last Dragon? Aren't you a parental figure? Well, we didn't want to pay $30 for it. We paid yeah. that $30 to watch Mulan and it just was not, I mean, it was, it was okay, but what are you talking about? You said Mulan wasn't... was your favorite film ever no, made. You I called it a masterpiece that. in cinematography. A perfectique is what I remember you <laughs> writing yes. in French, yes. making up a word that sounds like perfect. Hey, it um, worked. Okay, guys, this episode is going to be a little bit different than normal. Um, and before we get too far, I want to let you guys know that Jay Jolly had the opportunity to interview somebody. Tell us what that was, because it's going to come up on Friday. We're going to talk about the beginning, talk about the end. So I got to interview Jason and John from Lost and Cult Publishing. So they they built this publishing company, and they're... And you a know cult. How, like, and a... <laughs> yes, I'm sure that's what they, they meant by that. Lost um, and Cult, they meant they're also making a cult. So, you know, like when we were kids, we collect like Nintendo Power and PlayStation Magazine. Like I still have a, a butt ton of Game Informer magazines in a container in my closet. Okay. I've so thrown all mine away, but yeah, I had did, did a you? lot of those. Yeah, oh, I have some okay. of the strategy guides, but I've thrown all of my old magazines away. Okay. All it's right. Bummer. All right. Had to so let them go. Had to let, I mean, just got to throw them out of the nest, you know? Got to rip that, uh, rip that needle out of my arm, man, and then after the good times are done, <laughs> let him go. Okay. I know you just drop cold turkey. Went, went from yeah, I just went from uh, printed drugs to real drugs. It's just such yeah, that's a, the main thing. So much healthier now. <laughs> it is. I mean, that's what we're all about here is uh, needle-based drugs. So I'm not a big fan of those ones that you smoke. I like them in going into your bar, going into your bones. And so anyways, Lost and Cult members, uh, Joss uh -huh. and uh, so, Joss Whedon. <laughs> John, John and Jason, and they okay. are creating this this magazine. Or it's not a magazine. It's a journal okay. that has all these like niche topics in gaming. Well, not not niche really, but like they some of them are niche and some of them are, they're are about you niche. Know, big feature. Friedrich Nietzsche. Friedrich Nietzsche are big like feature pieces, but they're... They wanted to create something with this idea of like being free from the shackles of marketing, right? Like I, I don't need to, I'm not being paid by Ubisoft to review this game. Okay. So I don't have to like say this or say that. So they're, 
you know, and John is actually a video game historian, so he's all about preserving video game history. Neat. So it, they they set out to make this gaming journal, and they are, um, you know, it's their their Kickstarter is open right now. So I'm gonna put the link, you know, we'll put the link to the Kickstarter in the episode description, and you can give to it. But the uh, what is the, the Kickstarter? So we actually know what it's called. It is just um, Lock On Magazine. So let me see if I can Lock On Magazine oh. Kickstarter. I'm gonna see if this is Googleable. See their SEO. See how Kickstarter.com Lost and Cult. Oh, Kickstarter.com Lost and Cult. Okay, I will try to remember that. That pop up. Cult. Let me see. Lost Ones by Greenbrier yeah, gonna... Games. No, I'm gonna throw this into the chat here. Okay. I'm gonna I gotta read this out to people. I need everybody to okay. There you go. Lost in Cult, Lock on Volume One. Oh, okay. Wow, that looks really neat. Yeah, and yeah. So close it's to like... their goal. Yeah, so you could do like a paper version of it, or you could do a hardcover version of it. And what it is, it's basically like it's it's a has a bunch of features in it, and it you know it can it's also kind of like an encyclopedia in a way of like gaming you know gaming history and things like that. So um, it's a really cool thing. But anyways, yeah, I got to sit down and talk to these guys. Really smart, know a lot about gaming. We talked a little bit about. Um, you know, preservation and the all digital future. And th- there's a lot of good stuff in the interview. Cool. Yeah. I'm excited to, uh, to see it or to see it because <laughs> we don't do video, uh, to listen to it. And I'm, I'm looking at the, the journal right now. It is trade dope. Uh, hopefully you said they might be willing to join us on the show at some point. So maybe. We'll yeah. Yeah. They said they'd definitely be interested in jumping back on here. Cool, and we'll try to uh, throw that link in the show notes so you can check that out, but that's going to be up on Friday. So beyond just that craziness that we got going on this week, we are going to start with the news, and then we're going to talk about games, because we're gonna I'm going to be doing a little review of Spider... Marvel's... Sorry, I almost said it wrong. Marvel's DC Spider-Man, Spider-Man, but Marvel's Miles Spider-Man. Morales. Yeah, okay. I finished it uh, uh, yesterday. And yeah, I will talk about that later. But not, before we get to not that, not to be confused with DC's Smiles Morales. Yeah, DC's uh, Tarantula Man Smiles yeah. Morales. Smor- <laughs> <laughs> it sometimes feels like they have that. Like there was a character I didn't realize was DC. It's oh, like they're Beast all Beast Boy the, and yeah, uh, they're all knockoffs. Girl. Power Power Boy or Power Girl or whatever, and Superman, and yeah, they're all knockoffs of each other. It is kind of crazy, like how somebody hasn't been like, this is just this other guy with a different name. Um, but that's how comics are, man. They're for losers and idiots. Uh, this news <laughs> dropped last year, or last year, sorry, last week, right after we recorded. Um, Square Enix announced that they're going to have a digital showcase this week. It will air, I want to say, the day after this goes up. And it's going to include the reveal of a new Life is Strange game, something about Outriders, which we'll talk about more in this show, Balan Wonderworld, which I don't know if you guys remember, I talked about the demo of that. Mm -hmm. It is garbage. Um, That's coming out very soon. The ongoing celebration for the 25th anniversary of Tomb Raider, Marvel's Avengers, which they just had a showcase, so I don't know what they're going to do for that, Just Cause Mobile, (coughs) new mobile game announcements, and a f- look at a few of the whimsical games from Square Enix sister company, Taito. Uh, all in all, I, I don't know what to think about this pre- presentation. Like, I, it, one, it's not out yet. But two, like, I don't know if I should be excited at all. Like, I, I feel like... You're not excited about all these new mobile games coming out? Yeah, I mean, okay, so our our friend, Dr. Donna, was talking about, like, it's just mobile games. No, there's other non-mobile stuff, but it's like, what is the celebration of Tomb Raider mean? Like, is there going to be a new Tomb Raider game? Are they going to remaster that, I mean, that's or remake? Actually, yeah, I was just about to ask you that question. Is there another Tomb Raider? Allegedly, this new Tomb Raider film that's coming out is supposed to bridge the two Tomb Raider universes together, like the old one and the new one. So I don't know what that means, but... Uh, I don't know I'm, how that would work either because they're very different Laura Crofts. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, like, yeah, I don't I don't know either. I am, I'm intrigued for sure, but I just don't... Uh, I don't know where this is going. I would love to have another Tomb Raider game because, you know, as much as I didn't like the last Tomb Raider game, I still liked it, you know? 
Yeah, and I, I guess we'll just throw this news from today into this. Like, the Square Enix Presents was probably also to tell people that Outriders was coming to Game Pass, but that leaked today. And that, I mean, that's, like, pretty big, especially for Microsoft and Game Pass. Like, this game that, you know, I didn't love the Outriders demo, but now that it's coming to Game Pass, like, I may play it a little bit longer because it's no longer a $60 game for me. It's just free. Um, so stuff like that, that might have been why they wanted to do this, right? Because Outriders comes out April 1st. So this is like a couple weeks before, and maybe mm -hmm. they were wanting to do that. I don't know. I, I'm kind of surprised that Microsoft, if that was the case, leaked mm -hmm. it today. You know, <laughs> like, hey, it's yeah. going to be Game Pass. I, I don't know, man. There's a lot of things. Like Marvel's Avengers, I think they just released Hawkeye. So maybe they're starting the... the supposedly, there was supposed to be um, Black Panther and Spider-Man were coming to the game. Like, maybe that's what they're talking about with that. I don't know why they're doing a Just Cause for mobile. The last two console ones did very poorly, and I can't imagine that being a good mobile game. Um, my favorite, you know, I think it's... No, sorry, it's Square Enix Montreal. Actually, I don't know what they do, but they have, like, some mobile stuff. Like, I, I don't know, man. It's a really weird presentation that I'm hoping... I have very low expectations for, and I'm hoping it's better than it sounds because it sounds like they maybe didn't even need to put this all together. I mean, I like it when they do that stuff, but, like, they, they could have said, like, hey, tomorrow we're doing this. And I think that would have maybe been better. They're getting ready to introduce the Final Fantasy. Yeah, the Final Fantasy. That's they're what this whole thing is about. Re yeah, the. Rebuilding. This is the Final Fantasy. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> and then the final once one. the Final Fantasy 15 comes out, it will yeah. be, uh, they'll have to cross worlds and make Final Fantasy 15 cross the Final Fantasy 15 <laughs> HD HD, if you remember. <laughs> so that's when the UHD HD HD, 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 HD master. Lightning returns with cloud. Cloud. Yeah, Lightning Returns Cloud yeah. XX one three three four seven dot five fifteen Dreams Before Sleep or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Red, oh, integrate. Man. Yeah, their their naming convention at their company is so stupid. Like I don't know who on earth thought like half of those names. I, I don't know why they let if those are Nomura's name choices. Like I don't know why they let him name anything. Because they all suck. Like, what was the... Uh, and this was a better one, I think, than most. But what was the name of the the rhythm game? The Kingdom Hearts one that just came oh, out? Oh, Dream Drop. No, 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 no. Dream Drop no. Distance was 3DS. I think it's Melody of Memory. Is oh, that is right? That what, I don't know. I don't pay attention to anything. Which is does. short for mom. That's why they wanted that. Because they wanted all the moms out there to know that they're represented. Mom <laughs> of Memory. Uh, no, I mean, like, the Kingdom Hearts naming is stupid. Now Final Fantasy VII Remake's naming is ridiculous. I mean, it was already weird that it was Final Fantasy VII Remake. Just that was what it was called, even though it yeah. was, like, a part one. And then now it's Intergrade, which, I mean, maybe that means something. I've never heard the word Intergrade before. I'm actually going to do a quick <laughs> search to see. Oh, it does mean something. It means pass into another form by a series of intervening forms. They have several forms that integrate with each other. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's the use of it, of course. I'm sure everybody knows that. Knows that. I mean, I guess in that context, you, you can imagine how it can work, but it's still a goofy name, and it sucks. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the thing I'm most excited for is Tomb Raider, and whenever they announce that Marvel's Avengers is either free or coming to Game Pass, I'll be excited to you know try that out. But I'm not paying more than ten bucks for that game. So. Yeah. Yeah, at this point, it's like I, I'm not surprised if it's going to be five bucks here soon. Yeah. Um, PlayStation, not to be uh, one upped by Square Enix's bizarre presentations, announced that they are doing a presentation as well March 21st. So we'll probably talk about it again next week if they have some new news. And it is just featuring Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade and Resident <laughs> Evil Village. So it is just two games. It is a, a Japanese PlayStation event. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like, I don't know why they thought they needed an event for these two games. I mean, uh, Village comes out in May, and uh, Intergrade comes out in what, June? It's either June or July, I think. I think it's June. Um, June 10th, June, yeah. Pretty, yeah. So, I mean, it's just weird. I, I don't know why they think they need one for these two games and why it needs to be in March. Um, most people have already had the option to play Resident Evil Village. So, because they are, they had, if you have a PS5, should say maybe it's announcing the next demo because there's a yeah. demo for everyone soon. 
Um, yeah, are you excited for either of those games? I mean, we've talked about them both um, at great length, but I mean, I will play. Do I have? Do I have to have? So we talked about this, right? Integrated is not coming out on PS4. It's yeah, it's a PS5 game only. Jeez, that is that kind of like, I don't know. It irks me a little bit. I mean, it, it is irksome as a PS5 owner. It makes me a little bit happy, kind of like Halo. Uh, like but, we talked about Halo. Uh, what's yeah. it, What's the Halo game coming out? Uh, <coughs> Infinite. Infinite. Infinite coming. We would like it to just become a Series X, Series S, so we don't have to worry about them making it yeah, like, for all the here's, consoles. Here's the thing, though. Like, if they're making something exclusive to the PS5, they need to up the production of the PS5. Like, they need to make them more readily available and this is something i commend microsoft on because you don't see these new consoles anywhere yeah. like it's the moment they pop up online they're gone just like that so um this is why i i kind of see now why microsoft is doing previous gen stuff as well as the new gen stuff sony is already shutting down their ps4 communities so yeah this is, saw that today. Um, that's the new news yeah so i mean lo- looking at this like it's this is kind of irritating because People can't get PS5s. Like you go to to any GameStop or any you know store, you can't even find a PS4 anymore, just because people want so bad to play PlayStation games that they can't and they can't get a PS5. So they're buying last gen consoles. Those they're like sold out everywhere. So I don't know, man. Like I just don't think that it's a good idea at this point, especially since they're not going to make the profits that they probably will want to make because they're excluding a whole you know section of gamers that can't get their hands on this new product. Yeah, so from what I understand, a lot of this comes down to like microprocessing units in uh, China because that's where everything's made. Uh, and they haven't been able to hit full capacity in terms of um, they're, they haven't been able to wrap, ramp up production. So it's not just that like you're talking about people buying up all this stuff. They're not able to make it and they're having to choose what they make. So they're not making many PS4s anymore. They're trying to focus on PS5 stuff. Same with Xbox. That's one yeah, of the people said they're... that that's why they're, they got rid of One X is not only to make way for Series S, but also because they can't keep having resources go into every single one of these uh, SKUs. Uh, that being said, I agree with you. That is dumb that it's PS5 only. I don't know if Square Enix is has like a one-to-one relationship with Sony where they can be like, what's your production like? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I think they probably assume or hope that the PS5 will be uh, available. Uh, like maybe not easily available, but available by like June. You know what I mean? So I I, I agree with you. I think it would have been nice if they would have made it available on PS4 as well, especially mm-hmm. because it doesn't look like graphically that different. So I'm curious yeah. what they're doing on PS5 that they couldn't have just made two versions mm-hmm. of the game, one without the dual sense, one with. But, you know, I mean, that's not what they decided to do. I don't think this integrated thing is going to be necessary. My guess is it's going to be a two hour DLC and it's probably going to be 30 bucks. And so, yeah. like, Take that as you will, you know, take it as you will. And you could probably buy, you know, at the end of this year, you probably buy or no, if you buy integrated, it already comes with everything. So that was, uh, I love that video that you started (laughs) because I heard that. Oh, Um, sorry. I was just clicking on something and it opened. I'll stop going to all the pornography while we're on the thing. But uh, (laughs) yeah. So anyways, that PlayStation event is uh, March 21st. So that will. Oh, you know, we will probably be talking about that then on uh, next week's episode. So this is something neat that Microsoft uh, announced um, that I think is cool. And real quick, I want to throw this news out. Undertale, one of my favorite games ever. It's launching on Xbox Game Pass tomorrow. Boom, it's been boom. on PS4 and Switch and <laughs> PC. And it was even on uh, PC Game Pass for a while. But I'm just Game Pass owners play it. It's great. Um, Microsoft did something else. They, you know, they announced that they finally acquired Bethesda. They put together this really cool trailer where it's, Microsoft Studio games like Gears and Halo and Forza and all this other stuff with Bethesda games. And they're like, somebody did a really cool edit where they're like looking into portals and the other games are there. And it was just neat. Did you watch that trailer? I didn't get a chance to see the trailer. Oh my goodness. It is, it is so cool, (laughs) man. Like that trailer, like got me hyped on this whole acquisition more so than I already am. Cause like, I think it's good things for Microsoft. They also mentioned that day that games from Bethesda will be coming to any place where game pass is. So that was like a big piece of news. So it does sound like a lot of these games are going to be exclusive to Microsoft consoles like Xbox or PC or Windows OS. But one of the things they also mentioned, and we talked about this maybe like uh, two or three weeks ago, 
or maybe it's been two months now, is uh, Microsoft added this thing called an FPS boost. It uh, boosts the frames per second to take... Uh, take more advantage of what the series X and series S can do. So these, this is for older games, Xbox one and Xbox 360 games in some cases. And what they're doing is they let these games that ran at a stable 30 now run up to a stable 60. And it just, Microsoft is doing this on this end, on their end. It doesn't require like a patch from the developers or anything. So they don't have to waste their resources doing it. So anyways, they added five more games to this FPS boost. Uh, the previous five were like Far Cry and uh, Watch Dogs 2 and a few other old games. And these five they just added were Bethesda titles. So Dishonored, Definitive Edition, uh, Definitive Edition The Elder Scrolls 5, Skyrim, Special Edition, Fallout 4, Fallout 76, and Prey. And um, I, you know, it w went launched today, um, March 15th. So if you want to try it, you just go into your game and click on the compatibility options and turn on an FPS boost if you have a Series X or oh. Series S. And I ran Far um, Far Cry. I ran um, Fallout 4. And, man, it's like night or day difference. It looks Is it? so much better. i jump better. on there and check it out. Yeah, yeah I'm actually uh, putting uh, Skyrim on my internal so I can see how that runs. Because my Fallout 4 game is gimped. I added mods and stuff, and I didn't want to play it because once you add mods, you can't get achievements. And anyways, there's yeah. a whole bunch of stuff to that. So I am probably going to start that game from scratch if I ever play it again and just lose the 30, 40 hours I played years ago. Um, but Skyrim, I picked up, and I've never played it yet. I haven't even started it. So this is going to be something you have for... played Skyrim. Yes, though, but right? but not okay. on Xbox One. I didn't play it when they re-released it because I was like, "What's the point of this?" Um, yeah. But I picked it up on sale for like twelve bucks. You know, last okay. month, and I was like, all "Okay," right. stupidly because it all is coming well. to Game Pass. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, I get it. Got it when it was on sale, and um, yeah, so I'm excited to try the rest of them. Like especially for games like Prey, which ran well but had a lot of issues. That is going to be like that was one of my favorite games. I don't know if you remember that that came game came out in 2017. <laughs> And it yeah. was like so much fun. I love it. I absolutely love that game. Was yeah, you could actually pick that up on physically at Walmart for I think it's six dollars right now on clearance. Yeah, it's twenty seventeen. Well, I mean, there's no need though. If you have if you have Game Pass, it's free. So well, I, I mean, even... if you're a collector of physical media like okay. myself, <laughs> okay, you know, it's just well, nice pick up Ray and, and, and you'll shelf. never you'll never play it like Yakuza, uh, like a dragon. Have you started that yet? No. Have you started that yet? No. I I told you, man. I have a hard time with these like story driven games jumping in and out of them. So I'm still stuck playing Assassin's Creed. Oh man, that came. But you already told us how much you dislike Assassin's Creed. Let it die. I, I Don't can't finish it. Help it. I am. I'm. I'm stuck. Not stuck on the game, but like I. I just. I'm so invested at this point. I have to finish it. Yeah, well, anyways, check out the Digital Foundry video on uh, these games because it's really neat to see the upgraded FPS boost just watching it. Like, some games like New Super Lucky's Tale went from 30 to 120 frames per second with the boost. So it was just like they show it at, like, half speed and how smooth it looks at 120 versus, like, how janky it looks at 30. It's, dude, the whole thing's incredible. There's auto, it's also auto HDR on these games, but that only happens if your TV has HDR, which I don't, so I haven't okay. turned on auto HDR. But yeah, it's really, it's super simple. It's literally clicking manage game and going to compatibility options and clicking a toggle on or off. So you guys should try that out. That is cool. And for our last bit of news today, Nintendo is reportedly expecting, and this is from IGN, and a lot of this news from IGN, Game Informer, and Microsoft's own site, Nintendo reportedly expecting another record year for software with a series of major <laughs> games. That's all it says. Um, nobody knows if that means we're talking more Animal Crossing or they think Monster Hunter Rise is the game or if they're talking about games we don't know about. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. We don't know if they're just thinking their old games are going to sell like hotcakes still or if they have some new stuff they haven't talked about yet. But this is for April 2021 to March of 2022, this fiscal year. They are expecting 250 million, 250 million units of software to be sold, which is – it's a lot. I mean, there's uh, 80 million switches out there, so – expecting so quite a bit do you, i mean this must mean that they obviously have some things on the pipeline still for 2021 i mean we hope that's what the the rumor and the thought process is is why would they be expecting like this many sales if it's just old games you know but <laughs> yeah, mario kart but... 8 is still one of the highest selling games ever 
and that came out in 2017. Right. Right. I'm I'm curious here what cuz we know that like there's no Zelda coming out. And I and well, honestly we, like we don't know that. Cuz they they keep having well, you know, they have the Zelda remakes coming out, but like we don't we the Mario games like Mario Kart is, is never goes on sale, right? It's always $60, but Yeah. You, know, you look at like Odyssey, Mario Maker, Luigi's Mansion. These games are constantly going going on sale. So that leads me to believe that they're not selling as much as they did when they first came out. So, you I know, mean, they're I, I still selling like hotcakes. Like Mario Kart still, 8 sold like, 10 million copies right, last year Mar- or something. So yeah, and Mario Mario Kart 8 is a game that never goes on sale, though. It's always fifty nine ninety nine. So, yeah. you know, it makes me wonder that, I mean, wonder if they have, there is, I mean, you know, we have the Pokemon thing coming out, and uh, but I wonder if there's there's got to be something like big that has not been announced yet. So IGN is like hypothesizing that, you know, Breath of the Wild 2 could be released early 2022, um, or they could be expecting Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl to sell a lot, or they could think Pokemon Legends is coming out in that time. They could have a new Mario game that hasn't been announced. They could have more Zelda remakes that aren't done. I mean, nobody knows. You know, they are, they, them and Microsoft right now have so many cards held to their chest. Like, I don't know what's going on. You know, the only company I know has games lined up really is Sony. And even theirs are likely to get shifted. So, Yeah. yeah, it's weird, man. They are expecting a big year. I'm just hoping they're expecting that year based on the fact that they have new games coming out, not based on the fact that people just buy their games. Because if that's the case, that's like a bummer. You know, it's like being like, oh, okay, yeah, people just buy our stuff anyways. So yeah, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if we release a new game or not. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, so I thought that was a, a neat story. I'm really, really hoping. And, you know, it, this fiscal year is starting in like two weeks. So they might have a lot to show, right? Like all they've talked about is up to July. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's another Nintendo Direct right around that time to be like, hey, because we, I mean, the only other game we know that's coming out this year is Pokemon Brilliant whatever, and I don't even know when that's set to launch. You know, maybe September, October, November time. Um, Yeah, yeah, man. Any thoughts on that before we move on and take a quick breaky-poo? I don't know. I mean, I'm hopeful that we get some... uh something big you know outside the uh wind waker like i i would love you mean to skyward see, sword or skyward sword yeah, yeah i mean i would love to see um you know not not any like remakes or anything but like i i would enjoy seeing something that's like new that hasn't been on switch before that is maybe like in the vein of an rpg like that could be really cool yeah <laughs> i i hope they have plans that's just all i can say because like this article could literally just be them being like, yeah, if we release one Pokemon game and we have those remakes coming out and yeah. based on our sales last year, we're going to hit 250. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, I, I don't know their software units sold in fiscal 2021. Um, software units sold. But if it's like 200 million, then yeah. I, I, you know... Of course, they're gonna assume 250. Like, especially if they have that uh, switch upgrade, you know, for because more yeah. people will buy stuff again. Um, but yeah, it's it, okay. So it sounds like its current record was 204 million software units in 2008. That was the last time they've had that many, and it yeah, it doesn't even. I can't even find how many software units they sold this last year. So I don't know if it's fairly close or, or way far off or you know like that stuff yeah. they, ju- they just don't they don't give a lot of information nintendo's never been that company that's oh, like no. shows and, their and they cards. don't they don't need to people are gonna are still gonna love them no matter what they do or don't do i mean yeah we t- i just listened to our last episode so i could hear how you know good i sounded that's the main thing i care about but anyways i was checking it out and i noticed we talked about how they are the company that doesn't care if they make you rebuy stuff you know oh, they no. don't really care no, about no, no, no customer service and yeah. people love them still. And I, I'm I'm just as much blame. You know, I was like so excited for the Switch. It was a dream come true. But you know, like we talked about this last week, I'm hoping that I don't have to start all over again on Switch 2 or whatever. So I'm yeah. hoping this is like an iterative process. So we'll see, man. I really, really, really am hoping that they announce a new Mario game. 
Um, I don't think we're going to get another Zelda besides Breath of the Wild 2 that's new. I think we might yeah. get maybe another surprise remake like Link to the Past in the vein of a Link's Awakening or something like that. I could see that being a possibility. But I think it's more likely that they bring Wind Waker and Twilight Princess as like a dual pack or even do Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask as a dual pack. Um, so, yeah, we'll see, man. This is going to be cray. We're going to hit that sweet, sweet breaky poo and be right back. Yeah. Super BS. Super BS. Okay, my brothers, we are back. It is time. Super BS reviews. We have not done one of these since the olden days, the olden golden days. I finished Spider-Man or... Gosh, darn it, because that name is so stupid. I finished Marvel's Spider-Man colon Miles Morales uh, last night, and I I mentioned I've been playing it. I spent maybe 13 hours with the game, maybe 14 or so. I, I don't know. There's no easy way to check how long I've actually played it, but it is very cool. Did you get a chance to play Marvel Spider-Man that came out in 2018? Uh, yes, I did. I didn't play a lot of it, but I really? did play it. Okay, I, I really dug that game. I thought that game was incredibly fun. You didn't like it? No, I didn't not like it. I just, you know, like a lot of games that I wish I had more time to play, I didn't uh, play it. Well, good news. If you want to rebuy it on PS5, you can buy an upgraded version with Miles Morales for like 20 bucks more. And it has actually a totally different character model for Peter Parker. I did not buy that version because I don't think I'm going to go back to Marvel Spider-Man 2018. But anyways... Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales is a essentially a DLC expansion, but it's about a six-hour story expansion, so it's, it's quite sizable. That's why Sony decided to sell it at $50. Like, it's not a cheap um, add-on, if you will. But it takes place in Manhattan. You play as uh, Miles Morales, which is like the new Spider-Man from I don't even know what year, probably Ultimate. 2010 yeah, or whatever. He's, he's... Born in the ultimate Spider-Man universe shortly after Peter Parker meets his demise at the hands of Green Goblin. Okay, so, you know, I don't want to give away much, but that's not the storyline here. The storyline here is a world where there are two Spider-Mans coexisting, similar oh, okay. to uh, the Spider-Verse film, if you've seen it. So uh, it's it's really cool. Um, it, I don't know if this Nicolas is... It has Nicolas Cage in it? Is it that has what Nicolas, you're saying? Yeah, it's mainly a Nicolas Cage joint. He's in That's every... That's what we all wanted. He's in every That's... scene yelling and screaming. Yeah. Even if it doesn't make sense, they just have, <laughs> Not the bees! Ah! <laughs> ah. <laughs> and it's it's... It's literally frozen in New York, but for some odd reason, he's being chased by bees and he's getting burned alive as a wicker man in Central Park. Um, back to real life. Stop with the shenanigans. Okay, Jay Jolly. Um, Spider-Man Marvel, Spider-Man Miles Morales. You play as Miles Morales. He has venom powers, so he can do like electricity, electric jumps, like a whole bunch of different electric moves that you learn over the course of the game. There's a lot of little collectibles that you can find. They're all, uh, marked on your map. So if you want to, you can set waypoints and go to, um, the story is really cool. It's a very simple, easy to follow story. Probably if I would have mainlined it, the story can be done in four to six hours. Like it's, it's not very long. There's not like a ton to it, but it's really enjoyable. It uses the dual sense slightly. It's not really using those triggers too much. Um, it's graphically, it's incredibly impressive, but I felt like Spider-Man or Marvel Spider-Man 2018 was also very impressive. So I haven't noticed like if it's that much better, you know, by all standards, I'm sure it is. Um, ran at a great 60 the whole time. Uh, the voice acting, all that work is incredible. I want to get a couple things out, and then I want to get some questions from you, my boy. Uh, but yeah, overall, like Marvel Spider-Man 2018, I just thought it was a joy. A joy to play, a joy to watch. Like, a joy it was to the world. Joy to the dorks, the the Spider-Mans are born. Um, yeah, it is, it's cool. Like, Did you ever play the Batman games? Batman Arkham Knight. Oh, yeah, Batman I Arkham. love the Batman game. I didn't play Arkham. What What was the last one to come out? Not oh, Arkham uh, Knights. The, it was like Arkham, Arkham Origins or something like that. No, the last one that came out was like no, Arkham City. Arkham Knight was the last one that came out. So okay, there was Arkham well, Asylum, Arkham Knight, and I want to say Arkham City. There's, or, I think Arkham Origins is the one that I didn't play. Okay, yeah, I didn't play Arkham Origins either. So it's Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and Arkham Knight. <laughs> And Arkham yeah. Knight was the one that came out in 2015 for Xbox One and PS4. And that game is... I love that game. Anyways, yeah. like that series, the you can do stealthy takedowns where you're, like, hanging on, like, 
because you're Spider-Man, you can hang on the ceiling or hang on the walls or hang on rafters and you can shoot webs and grab them if they're safe. And there's like something that will let you know if enemies can see you doing the move or not. So there, there's a lot of neat things. You know, somebody can shoot a rocket at you and you can web it and sh- throw it right back at them. It doesn't oh. kill them because rockets in this world are stupid and don't do any damage really. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's fun. There's very, very, it's a very condensed and contained story. It's not crazy like Marvel Spider-Man 2018. Like the only villain, and this isn't revealing much because this happens in the first hour, the only Spider-Man villain in the game is Rhino. So, hmm. yeah, it's not like there's tons of other stuff. There's Miles Morales villains, two of them in it, but otherwise the main villains that we know, Vulture, uh, Doc Ock, all those guys, the only one from there is Rhino. So uh, it's neat. Do you have any questions? Do you know anything about the game? Do you? Uh, no, I don't. But I mean, do you, is, is Peter Parker in this game? Like, do you talk to him at all? Do you communicate, interact? Yeah. I, yeah. I'll give the premise real quick so you can understand it. So you start the game working with Peter Parker and the first mission is to, you know, move. What's the, the high security prison called? Um, uh, right. Rikers. Uh, no, no, no. That's uh, Rikers, I think, is Batman. This one's called the No, that's Ark. Arkham. The, oh, the Ark? Yeah, the Ark. So it transports like all the Marvel's villains, right? So your first mission is you and Peter Parker are transporting that, and then obviously it breaks open, Rhino comes out, and you guys try to take him down, right? That's the right. beginning, and then what happens is you do that stuff, and then Peter needs to go to Europe to spend time with MJ and do other things. So he's like, hey, if you need me, give me a call, blah, blah, blah. So you'll talk to him a couple times throughout the game, but it's mainly a Miles Morales story. And it's cool because I know nothing about him and I have only watched Into the Spider-Verse. That's my only knowledge of the character. So like you meet him, Genki, which I assume is his friend from the comics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, his mom, uh, you know, I, I don't want to give away spoilers from 2018, but some stuff happens with his dad. And then, uh, yeah, you're kind of like in Harlem helping the people around out there. It's there's like leveling up systems. You can get up to level 20, you get experience from doing missions and, and fighting guys and all those things. You can buy new suits with these tokens. You'll find, you can upgrade your gadgets. You have gadgets, like obviously your web slinger. And then you have like a remote mine. You have a gravity pole that can pull all the enemies together. And you have like holograms that can fight people. And there's multiple challenges beyond the missions. Like there's uh, stealth combat and traversal challenges. There's all the collectibles. Like I mentioned, there's side missions, there's crimes and there's activities. And so there's just lots to do and it's all pretty enjoyable. And the only ones that are repeatable are the crimes and you don't need to repeat them if you don't want to you just do them okay. once. And get can, them like can you, can you mainline the story? Or do you have to do the side quest? Like level up you know get experience and all that so that's a really good question so i don't know if it's a level gated thing but after missions they will have like time where it's like oh i need to wait for someone so i should go and turn on my our friendly neighborhood app which is an app that genki made for you so you can track the bigger side missions and the crimes okay. so you can click on those they'll put a waypoint <coughs> go to those but yeah, it seems like those are either time based or maybe mission based. So maybe you have to do like one or two missions, okay. or maybe yeah. it's like five I'm minutes. Kind of encouraging of you to explore the world a little bit. Yeah, and it's cool because like I'm doing a lot of the side stuff at the end of the game, and a lot of that stuff is has dialogue where it's like, oh, this person's already in prison, or else you know I learned about them. You know what I mean? It's like, oh man, okay. <laughs> if I would have yeah. done this earlier, the dialogue would have been slightly different. Um, but yeah, the suits are all really neat. There's an incredible suit that I guess I'll spoil here. It's an Into the Spider-Verse suit that has the frame rate from the film. So your character kind of like bobs and web. It's it's incredible. If you can watch a YouTube video of the way this suit looks in the game, it's it's mind-blowing. It's so beautiful. Like Insomniac was really like showing off when they made that suit. Um, there are no loading times in the game at all. It's, it's kind of incredible. The second you get into that world, like whether you're going into a sewer or a building and then coming out, there's maybe like a fraction of a second where you lose control as you get out of the grate, but there's no load. It's just, you're immediately on the wall and then you can continue from there. It's, it's wild, man. It's a really, really well-made piece of, I want to say DLC expansion, whatever final fantasy integrate. It's probably bigger than that whole thing will be, (laughs) you know, it's, it's, it's like that, but it's better because it's like, 
pretty much 13, 14, 15 hours. I 95%ed the game. And by that, I mean I finished the story and I'm almost wrapped up with every side quest. However, to 100% or get all the achievements, you have to do New Game Plus. So I don't know if I will uh, do that. Okay. Yeah, that's how you get... Well, I mean, you said it's a pretty short game. So, I mean, it probably wouldn't take you that long to go... Yeah, it, it is, but it. I don't I don't care enough about trophies and like, you know, it's neat. And I might turn it on just to unlock the suit because there's one suit and one suit and uh, there's three final moves that are all only unlocked in New Game Plus. So like I might turn it on to see what those are. But otherwise, like I don't I feel like I got all I wanted out of it. I feel like it was really good. Like Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man 2018, man. That game was a very good, very condensed game. Um, I don't think I need to go back to that ever. And I yeah. didn't even finish all the side stuff in that because that game was bloated as crap. Like, did you, you didn't get very far, did you? No, no. I honestly didn't play past like the beginning tutorial stuff. Okay. Yeah. It, it's very bloated in terms of like, I want to say I spent 16 hours with that game and there's still side crap. And then because it's a PS4 game, when you fail challenges or need to redo them, you have to yeah. wait for load times to happen. Um, okay. So this this is just a lot easier. Like if I wanted to retry a traversal thing, I could just do it. But the only way to 100% the game is like get gold stars on all the traversal and stealth and combat. And those are so hard to do. And I just don't care enough to do those. So yeah, yeah it's... I'll just probably finish it and then, you know, probably won't touch it again, but I, it's it's worth playing. If you have a PS5 specifically, I would say it's worth playing. If you have a PS4, I'm sure it's great too, but it's one of those games I think that really takes advantage of the PS5 hardware. So I, I can't recommend it enough, especially because I was somebody who fell off Demon's Souls quickly. So it's like, those are the two games that Astro's yeah. uh, Playroom. Um, when you get a PS5, do you plan on playing it? Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's on my on my radar for sure. Um, you know, at the moment there's not really anything out that I'm dying to play. Obviously, I'll I'll be interested in playing Final Fantasy Intergrade when that comes out. But yeah. um, you know, yeah, I I, I will pro I will most likely end up playing it. Well, my review for uh, Mar Marvel Spider Man Miles Morales is ten webs out of five Green Goblin smoke grenades. So, uh, <laughs> you know how that is. I mean, that's a really good grade if I've ever heard it's, one. That's um, a pretty good grade on the Mary Jane scale, you know. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, well, yeah. it's all about the Mary Jane in this game. Okay. Oh. oh. Miles Morales is uh, meeting Mary Jane plenty in that game. I'll tell you that <laughs> he's a sixteen-year-old <laughs> who's looking for Mary Jane everywhere he goes, all up and down the city. Um. Anyways, this brought me to the fact that we have the time to do a small topic, and uh, you know, I am close to not a hundred percent in the game, but I I may or may not do it. But I want to ask you about games that are memorable to you because you actually put in the time to either fully complete them or get to like that very, very end where you max leveled or, you know, did the challenges um, just to kick it off. For me, one of my, the most memorable 100% games I've ever done is Breath of the Wild. And I didn't get the 900 Korok Seeds, so I can't claim that, but I did finish all 120 Shrines. And just that alone was incredibly time consuming, but a joy. Yeah. Yeah, I did. So I did all the shrines in Breath of the Wild as well. Okay. I didn't I, like you. I didn't do the Korok seeds, but like, yeah, I pretty much mined that world until there was nothing left for me to do in it. Um, I guess I could like outside of those games, like the other ones that I do kind of, I guess um, Skyrim is something that like I played just about every side quest I was able to get my hands on. So I, I had about, I want to say when I was done, about 210 hours sunk into that game. Wow. Did you get all the achievements? Because I did that the first, my first time I played Skyrim. Yeah. So I got all the ones that were out. And then like when they did like uh, the, the one DLC? where you could build the DLC where you could build the house. Like I played the DLC just to get the achievements. Like that's the only reason I went through that st stuff. So like. By the time the DLC came out, my guy was so overpowered that like I could literally just walk through dungeons and not have to worry about anything. 
Yeah, I've never played the DLC. I started the vampire one for Skyrim, but I, I yeah. quit there and I kind of, I mean, that's why I want to turn it on again. I want to go back. I never even played the good one. You know, the final DLC for the game was like you go oh, back yeah, to Morrowind that, um, or, yeah. or that island. Uh, I forgot what it's called, but the ice island. Yeah, so the first time I played that, uh, I a dragon came down actually like killed one of the npcs that you need to talk to to oh, no. progress in the game so like i had to go back i didn't get to play that my first playthrough oh. i had to wait until like the remastered edition came out on xbox uh one in order before i w was able to go back to that oh wow man all right besides skyrim which we both seem to have a lot of love for but is a 2011 game has there been anything in the last like six, seven years, the Xbox One, PS4, Switch generation that you 100%ed besides Breath of the Wild? So I 100%ed Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Really? That's a crazy did, one. Yeah, that, that one that takes was, a long time. It was time. such a fun game, though, and the world was so beautiful in that. Like, I, I wanted to explore every inch of it. Yeah. Um, and then I did, uh, anytime there's a new Forza out, I always 100% those games. Like, really? I'll do the, the stunts, I'll do the races, I'll do the, uh, whatever the exploration stuff is. Like, those are ones that I do try to get all the achievements in. Wow. See, for me, the first game I've 100%ed in forever was Ghost of Tsushima. Like, I okay. just don't normally 100% games. That's just not who I... It's not, like, my game playing style. Like, even Yakuza Like a yeah. Dragon, a game I loved, like, I didn't do everything because it just takes forever. Right, so, right. Yeah, I mean, like, I get really impatient, too. Like, if it's not something I can 100% I can complete easily, I won't waste my time with it. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm curious if something this year... Besides, obviously, Miles Morales, which is a last year game, will make me want to 100% it. You know, like I've been looking at the lineup this year and Skyward Sword, if I play it, I'll probably just beat it and get the heart containers, which is my normal Zelda thing. You know, get the heart containers, get the bottles for the fairies and then beat the game. I don't really care about anything else that they have for me. And then, um, you know, maybe Biomutant, if that comes, if that still comes out in May and is incredible, that's a game I could see like wanting to spend a lot of time in that world. But games that I like 100% are games you generally don't have to play multiple times to 100%. You know what I mean? They're games yeah. where it's like you can do it all in one playthrough. Um, yeah, I, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, I just wanted to kind of posit that question as like favorite 100 percent moments. Do you have any other ones that were like that just stuck with you besides Forza and Assassin's Creed? Um, I mean, I... Yeah, I guess with like um, like Halo uh, Five, you know, every time a new Halo game comes out, I'll try to do like all the skulls and all that stuff. But like those ones, there's so much to do that it's it's hard. So many random achievements that it's hard to really 100% those games. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as like wandering off the beaten path in a game, like it it really has to pull me into it. Like it has to be super intriguing for me to want to go through and you know, explore more than what's on the the path in front of me. Like I I I can't think of anything off the top of my head that I have hundred percented besides those games. Like the Devil May Cry games, like I try to do as much as I can, but like I don't you know, as far as like the bloody palace modes go, like I don't I don't play increased difficulties in games because I'm already like struggle enough with them. Yeah, I mean a weak, not real gamer get good. Um yeah, yeah that's right, you. Right. I mean you gotta get good at some point. But yeah, I I hear you. I think the the game that I might you know if I ever get back to it, hundred percent is or what you can hundred percent because it's such a weird game is Cyberpunk. Like I've kind of been going okay. in and cleaning up stuff in that game. But at the same point, that is a game where I already missed out like three different things in the story. So I I don't know if I can say I actually hundred percent it where like certain characters yeah. died that didn't need to. You know so. Mm -hmm. It's weird, man. I just think that's a, an interesting thing, especially as we get older and it gets harder to pour that much time into a game. A lot of times for me, it's once I see credits roll, I stop playing, you know, because like, yeah. oh, I'd rather play something else and I got other stuff to do. Uh, but yeah, I, I've been playing Bravely Default 2 as well. And, you know, I've been talking with Dr. Donna about it and they're just really enjoying it. But for me, I, you know, I, I dig it. But I don't see myself maybe even finishing it, just playing some more of it and enjoying it while I while it lasts, and then whenever it's done, you know, yeah. kind of never thinking about it again. 
So yeah, I mean, there there are those rare games that come come along every once in a while, and you're just kind of stuck on them. You know, you 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 crave going back to that world, and it's kind of sad when there's no more you know DLC or add-ons, or you're done with it. Yeah, I mean, this is an extremely old one, but the last time I remember just wanting to stay there was Sleeping Dogs. I don't know if you ever played that game, <laughs> but I did a hundred percent that game. I got every single achievement, and then I played yeah. uh, all the DLCs. But the achievements in the DLCs were way too difficult, so I didn't do all of those. Okay, but uh, yeah, that game I just loved. You know, I just moved back from China, and I was I loved being in you know fake Hong Kong in this really fun martial arts game with like cool driving, and even the gunplay was relatively enjoyable. I've actually gone yeah. back to that game since because it's just such a fun game uh but yeah that's it, it's a weird thing it is a weird concept and idea the idea of like sticking around with a game in a world mm-hmm. where 50 games come out a week it feels like you know like yeah, yeah. we're not we're not pc gamers here or else we would probably be talking about Valheim right now uh the the most popular pc game you know i didn't even bring it up in news but that game is early access from the careers of goat simulator and it sold five million copies and like everybody and their mothers are playing it right now but you know we mainly play console stuff so it's like that idea that somebody could do that and then also 100 percent a bunch of other games is wild to me like i don't know how you find yeah. the time in the day to do it um before we hit the road can you tell everybody one more time again a little bit about that friday interview that's going to go up uh, yeah, it's an interview with Jason and John of Lost and Cult Publishing about their new gaming journal, which is actually a really cool product. Again, we're going to post the link in the the link to their Kickstarter in the description, and that's going to have they got about twenty two days to accomplish their goals. They're they're, they're half, close. They're they're close. They're you know they're um I've, what that uh, they're at eleven thousand of eighteen thousand yeah. is what I saw last so, time. Um, if you get a chance, get on there, give money. Uh, it's you get some really cool rewards. It's a it's a really cool product. Like it's a very beautiful and well put together journal. Uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, you can even reach out to them. There's email addresses on their Kickstarter page if you want to know a little bit more about it. But yeah, I I sat down. I got to talk with them. There's really really uh, you know great guys, and they had a, a lot to say as far as like video game preservation and what the point of this journal is. And uh, I, I enjoyed my conversation. I'm looking forward to having them join us on the podcast here one of these days. And uh, yeah, check it out. That will be dope, my brothers. So check that cool journal out on Kickstarter. Kickstart us. Go to our webpage at uh, Broly or whatever, broler.biz. <laughs> uh, just give some money. Find a URL and find a way to give it to us. I mean, you do that too. I mean, everybody everybody likes money, right? So give them right. money. Who doesn't? Uh, yeah, who these doesn't? guys, they have a, a sign on there that says, money please, from uh, Marks and Rec. <laughs> and it's just that soundbite over and over and over again. Everybody loves yeah. that soundbite. Yeah, of course. Okay, my bro, I have to prepare to watch Justice League Snyder's cut seventh edition um it's it's going on right now last time i checked so i'm watching when does that actually come out on thursday so wednesday actually at 8 p.m and i will finish <laughs> it that night how long it's four hours right it's four four hours yep wow are you gonna watch they it break it that day yeah i'm, I'm gonna i mean i won't probably won't watch all of it i'm gonna watch it episodically Loser. so you watch it in four parts like it's wait what do you mean you watch it in four parts so you can watch I, i'm not sure how this release works you can watch it as a whole but you can also watch it in four parts because he released the titles of the four parts of the justice league but i mean is the the movie gonna be divided by parts or do you have to stop it knowing where the parts I, are I don't know. I'm sure there's either going to be an option to watch it all at once or watch it according to like the watch it episodically because I don't I'm not going to have time to sit there and watch a four hour movie. Um, I love this. Zack Snyder's is New York Times, the best, most true news source on earth. Zack Snyder's Justice League review, super sized, super hopeless. Oh man, that guy must have been thinking See, about that title for is, weeks. This, yeah, this is the same type of people that probably like thought Star Wars: The Last Jedi was like the greatest movie ever made. Well, everybody <laughs> did. You're racist if you didn't like it. Okay, so stop no, being racist. Right. Um, you, you need to like. Canceled. 
uh, Jet Last Jedi, or else we're gonna lose this podcast, okay? And you specifically <laughs> need to talk about how much you like Rose, okay? If you don't talk about how much you like Rose as a character <laughs> and how she's the best Star Wars character ever added to the cinematic universe, then Kathleen Kennedy's gonna come to your house and kill your kids, okay? That's what she swore to do, <laughs> oh, and she is. Uh, that's what she likes to do on her free time, okay? She will come to your house. Apparently, that's a promise. Uh, she put yeah. it on like the small fine details disclosure, as if you talk about. Anything other than how much you like the character Rose, I will come to your house and murder your family. And uh, that's from Kathleen Kennedy. It's a guarantee she is truthful to that and honest. And uh, John Favreau sucks. She told me to tell you guys that. She's uh, a <laughs> <laughs> <she's>, uh, <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy for life. <laughs> uh, because he made the Mandalorian. Oh, man, that guy. He... It's herstory, John, not history, you <laughs> idiot. You racist, sexist pig. Yeah, it's not the tr- woman Delorean. It's the Mandalorian. <laughs> this guy is a gender dysphobiast, okay? I can't even <laughs> I can't even look at him anymore in Friends or Seinfeld because I'm so pissed about the man Delorean. Uh no, I uh I I don't know anything about Kathleen Kennedy. I just know the new Star Wars suck. And uh Kathleen Kennedy told me to say that. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is, a, this is a sponsored segment. This is sponsored by Kathleen Kennedy and her kids, John F. Kennedy, uh, as her children. <laughs> it's a time. She went back yeah, in time. No, exactly how that works. <laughs> and forward yeah. in time. She's been time and warping. Forward. Yeah. She gets on her warper all the time. Okay, my bro, <laughs> I will uh, chat with you later about the future of all things games. And that's us. We are the future of all things games. Super BS is, is the podcast about video games mostly. And everybody who's against us is losers and sucks. And they like Star Wars Last Jedi. Rose for life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah.